we are recording we're live on Facebook and we are translating so welcome everybody thank you for being with us Danielle so I'd like to officially welcome you to this triple translated event and Danielle you are a, a, a SEA superstar you're a wonderful teacher you're a wonderful collaborator Danielle is a diamond in SEA she is a dear friend and she has an amazing personal story. And I think that's a great place to start, Danielle, because many of us haven't heard how it is that you came to ASEA, what brings you here. And I know that um, it was a very interesting road. It was. <laughs> so thank you for, for inviting me here. And it's so nice to be with all of you and grateful to Mauricio and Sylvie. Uh, I will speak slowly uh, so they can translate alongside me. What brought me here, Christina, uh, we have to go back about 11 years. I was in a really severe car accident. I was actually struck by a drunk driver. And when I was 23 years old, uh, that car accident caused everything to change. My uh, health was taken from me. I sustained an injury to my brain. And it caused me to not be able to focus for more than about 10 minutes at a time. I had a hard time getting the words out that I wanted to. Wow. Uh, my processing speed was slow. I was dealing with sensitivity to noise, to light, and severe pressure and pounding in my head that was like relentless. And I went to a lot of doctors. Uh, I sought out a lot of options the, we'll call it Western world, my neurologist basically told me, sit tight. This might clear up in a month. It might take three. At six months, he said, well, uh, maybe it'll take a year. At my one-year appointment, he said, with this type of injury, the body's done the healing that it will do. And he said to me, this is your new normal. And you need to just al adjust your life uh, with these symptoms. Wow. That must've been really hard to hear. Yeah. I mean, when you're 24 years old, you have the world in front of you. <laughs> you know, I had just gotten out of college. I was starting a, a career, uh, living independently. I mean, living my dream. I was snowboarding on the weekends. I was living out in Colorado in the U S and that all came to a crashing halt. Um, I'm blessed that my family was open to looking at alternative things. So along the way, we were also doing different modalities, you know, acupuncture, chiropractic. I think the things we're all aware of, you know, out there to support our health holistically, but still none of those were really touching the issue either. And I was certainly in a dark place and um, struggling emotionally. I mean, <laughs> we could get into a lot there, but I won't. Uh, I want to dive into the moment that Asiya came. So mm -hmm. Uh, we got a phone call from an acupuncturist and she had known my mom for some time. And she said, I've, st I've come across something. I started using it in my practice and it's like nothing I've ever used before. It's repairing at the cellular level. And she said, it's helping every client. It's helping with a variety of different things. And she said, I believe it would pass the blood brain barrier and it could help Danielle. Mm -hmm. So that was when this lovely blue bottle entered my life. <laughs> and I, uh, I have to say my mom intuitively trusted, she bought it and, um, she brought it home and I just simply looked at the ingredients. I think many of us are trained to look at ingredients and the ingredients said water and sodium chloride. Mm -hmm. So I think like everyone, <laughs> I went, what is salt water going to do? right? I don't understand. And, um, my mom couldn't explain it. She didn't get the science. She said it's something called redox, but I have a degree in biology. I felt like I knew everything and I ignored her. I said, this is like a scam. You know, I'm not taking it. Uh, wow. so, yeah, I know <laughs> answers here on a silver platter and I ignored it. Um, but <clears throat> my mom started using it. And I don't know if any of you know somebody with bone on bone issues, but every knuckle in my mom's hands were bone on bone. 
to the point that she could not even like hold a knife to cut, you know, to prep food. Um, and she said, well, if you won't drink it, I will. And within six weeks, she was able to grip a knife. She had full range of motion back in her hands. They looked better. Like I could visibly see, you know, the redness and everything down. Wow. And I thought it's a placebo. <laughs> like I just couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't understand <laughs> how this could do that. Uh, but my dad started drinking it because he thought, well, wait a second. There's no way she imagined that away. And so my dad started using it and simultaneously started researching it. And within 10 days, my, my dad had, had an injury to his knee that had plagued him for life. He played college football, American football. And um, within 10 days, that was feeling better. He didn't have to wear a brace when he was working out. He was having more energy. And when he looked at the research, he said, Danielle, ASEA did not make up redox. That's a huge field of science. It was just too new. You didn't learn about it in school. And I went, huh. And we don't know what we don't know in life, right? So uh, I said, okay, you know, but I'm on all these medications. Like I'm worried about interactions. And we were told what's in here is in you. Can't hurt you. Basically might help you. Why don't you give it a go? Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's where I arrived <laughs> with ASEA. I started using it. I drank about eight ounces. Um, that's what they told me to start on. I didn't have any miraculous things occur out of the gate, but about three months in, uh, I started to have energy again. I started to be able to focus. I was able to finally have that pounding that had been relentless for years, or two years out from my accident. Gosh. It stopped. Uh, it has never come back. And yeah. as I continue to stay on it, uh, my sensitivities to noise have gone away. My sensitivities to light have gone away. And I, I mean, my health has been fully restored. That is so exciting. So you went from doctors literally saying your body can't heal anymore. And then we introduced these incredible molecules to the body and your body is able to continue healing. And I think that's a really great point to rem remind people that a C is not a medication, right? It doesn't cure or treat anything, but a C activates our own body's ability to do that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, my, my mind lit up because obviously once I had this experience, it was like, well, what is this stuff? And I remember I was sitting in uh, the office of my cognitive therapist and she said, Danielle, I've worked with people with your type of injury for two, like, like 30 years and to be two years out from your accident and have this much recovery so rapidly, she said, it just, it doesn't happen mm -hmm. in all of my years and all of the people I've worked with. And she said, what the hell is that stuff you started drinking? <laughs> And uh, I, at the time, didn't have an answer. I said salt water. I said, it's not salt water, but it's salt water. And I don't know what it is. And she was like this catalyst to learn. And we were put in touch with a member of the medical board, Dr. David Silverman. And I'll never forget that phone call because I was just listening like you guys are right now. I was listening to the call. And the things I heard him say just lit me up with potential. Because I thought, well, hang on, every plant, animal, being is just cells. And what he was telling me was this helps the cells to do their job better, helps them detect damage, helps the body to, to stimulate where repair is needed, keeps your genes turned on, which is huge because toxins and stress like that gets switched off. And I thought with something like this by our sides, like the potential to support every living thing is massive. And the biologist in me got very excited <laughs> by, uh, by, by that. And, um, you know, now, and the Renew 28 was just coming out then, this was 2014. And then the things I saw that do blew my mind, like quickly, you know, like instantaneously. It was like, wow, you know, what do we have our hands on? And um, I continue to this day, fast forward now, 
nine years, uh, wow. I'm still blown away. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, this might be a, a good moment to just make a pause, just to check that the speed, Mauricio and Sylvie, are we good with the speed or would you like, tell me if you want to slow down a little or it's good. Un peu plus long, yeah, just a touch slower. Right. Just, I think it's if we give just a little breath at the end of each sentence, just so they can. Uh, I'll do it, yeah. Yeah, thanks guys, you're doing a great job. And um, Danielle, what an amazing story. Uh, it's it's really powerful. And I think it's um, a great reminder as well that you didn't have a big change in one day or in one week. You understood that the body takes time to change and you gave this product, you gave your body a few months. And that's a really good point as well. So tell us when you made the transition from being really excited about ASEA as a product for you. And you made the transition where you started thinking about maybe I could share this with others. And you started looking at distributing ASEA. Well, for me, as I started to get my health back, I started to allow myself to think about my future. And there were a couple of just realities that I was facing. One, knowing that tomorrow is not guaranteed. I couldn't unknow that. And it made me very much want to do something that had purpose every day. I also understood that the exchange of my time for money was a situation that hadn't worked out for me <laughs> because when I couldn't work and I couldn't put the time in, uh, I couldn't get paid. And that was terrifying to me. And I never wanted to be in that situation again. However, all I had ever been taught was to get a good job with a good company. And I've been working since I was able to work. You know, I bought my first car. Like it just was ingrained in me. You work hard, you put in the hours, you're compensated. Uh, but I didn't want to go back to that. I thought that's not secure. I want something that could pay me even if I lose my health again. And it sounded mm -hmm. like I had lost my mind because I didn't know any options out there that could do that. And the last thing was I wanted flexibility with my time uh, to be able to spend it where I wanted, how I wanted, knowing that life is short. Um, I wanted to be able to enjoy it thoroughly and not just be at a desk behind a computer, someone telling me where to spend my time, that kind of thing. It just didn't feel like that's why my soul came here, if that makes sense. Mm. And I wanted more. So my mom <laughs> was the one that saw it before I did. And she said, Danielle, the business model attached to ASEA will do all of those things for you. And I was like, what are you talking about? Right? To me, ASEA was a product. That's it. And she said, it's network marketing. It's through word of mouth. And I said to her, those are like those scammy pyramid things, right? Like <laughs> I had no context. Uh, and the context I did have wasn't like a good feeling. I said, I'm too good for that, was my honest, like <laughs> what I said to her. <laughs> and and uh, she said, Danielle, you, you don't know what you don't know here either. Come. I want you to meet the founder of the company. I want you to meet the people in the company. I want you to get a bigger picture. And so I agreed to go to an event. And this was 2015. It was called the Ethos Academy. Mm. And I sat in that event for eight hours the first day on the edge of my chair, goosebumps, head to toe multiple times, oh. listening to Tyler Norton, the founder, speaking. And knowing in my soul that this would give me purpose. I mean, the purpose of the company is better people's lives and be a force for good in the world. And I thought, that's what I want to do. And I, I felt the, the reality of him knowing, you know, that it's about being present, being grateful. Like there's a book he talks about that is still behind me. It's kind of blurry, but that book he spoke about that day as one of the core guiding principles 
for people involved in the business. And the book basically says, be present, serve the people in front of you in every moment, and you will be living your best life. And I mm. thought, that's what I learned when I was healing. And if this company is like a representation of that in the world, like I want to be around these people. Yeah. And uh, then I started talking to those that had, you know, made it, uh, these diamonds and everything. And I said, is this real? Like, is there actually money here? Are you, do you actually have your time? You know, what, what, what is the reality? It all sounds good, but what's the like reality on the ground and with tears in their eyes, people were telling me about how the business had transformed their family's dynamics, mm -hmm. uh, had empowered them, their uh, trips they were able to take, just the, the beauty that their life was. And I thought, well, I don't know how to do this business. Uh, I'm a biologist. <laughs> I don't know a thing about business, but I'm going to figure it out. And uh, I left there with that knowing in my heart that this was the thing that would bring me what I was desiring. It was my vehicle and uh, committed to learning. And it's been a lot of learning, but it's been beautiful. Sorry, I keep muting people, but it's, it's occupational hazard. Um, Danielle, I think that is uh, such a profound experience that a lot of us share, you know, I went to an event and fell in love with the people, fell in love with um, the company ethos. And it really, uh, for those people that are maybe have had experiences with network marketing before and they were heartbroken or it, it didn't, um, it, it didn't do what it promised to do. What do you think is different about a seer? Well, I think that, you know, I experienced their ethos first. So it was this knowing that this company keeps P over E is the way they describe it. Principles, people, purpose. That's kind of the guiding light. And the economics of the situation, the money, uh, their own egos, right? Those things are there because you can't have a business if you don't make money or care about money and you can't have business if you don't have some level of needing to strive and achieve right the ego can be good but it shouldn't be the other way around and i think a lot of network marketing companies this industry can be indicted for it it's about achieving money and you know this like this certain rank and it's all very egotistical money driven like and it puts people off. I think it's given the industry a bad name. And in ASEA, it is just the, the ratio is right, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think in life, when you follow principle and you follow serving others, there's a lot of um, servant leaders here that are in it because they want to help others succeed. And they know through that, they too will succeed, but they're doing it through helping, through staying true to principle. And it's a very different feel here. I've met a lot of people now from a lot of other companies. There's some really good ones out there as well, but there's something special <laughs> within ASEA. And when you get around the people, uh, you just feel it. And it's a community. One of the benefits that I didn't realize was the community of people I would meet like all of you on this call, people from around the world, people that I don't even speak the same language as, where we're able to connect and build relationships and have like a, a beautiful bond, knowing that we're part of something that's bigger than ourselves. And I think also there's some truth to your network equals your net worth. And when your network expands, so does your own financial options and abilities because you start to learn things that in your current world and the current people you're around don't know. Uh, and that has been just a blessing. Yeah, for sure. The world expands, doesn't it? it does. And I think that's a really uh, great point, talking about networking and the world expanding. 
Um, I want to spend the last few minutes discussing a little bit how you've built your business, because um, many of us, myself included, I really didn't have very many warm contacts. I didn't have many people in my warm list. You know, for me, it was because my ex-husband had got started a year before, and so he had talked to everybody already. Um, but for you, it might have been a different reason. But I think there's a lot of us that want to know, once I've spoken to everybody I know, how do I build my business? How do I connect with more people? And I know you've largely been able to do this through social marketing and online networking. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you've built your business? Yeah, well, like you, my mom had talked to everyone that I knew in the year before I got started. <laughs> so I had no warm market. Um, I originally, when I first started, I Googled networking. I was like so ignorant. I didn't know how do you meet people. And I found things in my local community. So I was going out and meeting people in my community. And I did that for several years, doing events and that kind of thing. But I wanted to, to move and I did in 2020. And uh, we all know what happened. The world shut down yeah. and I, I couldn't do my business the way I previously had. So I always say, what is this challenge making possible? And the challenge of the pandemic made it possible for me to go online to meet people mm -hmm. and to learn a whole new way to do business. And to look at social media as uh, a, like, <laughs> rather than to be a consumer of content on there, to use it strategically and to say, well, these websites and platforms have basically grouped people of like mind together for me. When I'd go networking out in my local community, I never knew who I would meet. Would they be into health things that were alternative? Well, online, they're all hanging out together, talking about these things together. They're easy to spot, easy to find, easy to connect with. So I found social media to be this much simpler way to build my business, more efficient time-wise to meet people. Uh, in an hour, I could start 50 conversations, mm. um, whereas in person, I had one person I was really meeting in an hour. And I was able to start doing what I knew how to do, which was to network, to connect with strangers, to figure out what drove them, where they were from, what their wishes were, you know, if there was commonality that we had, I'd build relationships because this is a relationship business. So uh, I would build relationships with people. I would use my content that I was posting to deepen trust. I was, you know, vulnerable about things. I was a bright light and positive about things. So people got a sense of me and they, I always brightened their day when I came across them. And then we'd be talking in private and I would just eventually ask the question, are you interested, you know, in a health technology? Um, I've also would ask the question about the business from time to time. Hmm. So it just naturally grew. And it's like, I think most people complicate social media. They think it's overwhelming. They don't know where to start. But if you just look at it as a way to build relationships with people of like mind, I think you're going to find that you love it <laughs> and uh, that it's actually a blast and talking yeah. about your network, your network grows. Um, and, you know, you just get over yourself is all I can say about posting. Um, you do have viable things to say. Your life is interesting. Who you are going to resonate with is going to be a person like you. Um, you know, you don't look at somebody that's living some lifestyle that you're not and think, well, I can't post because I'm not traveling all the time and my life isn't extravagant. You can post about your dog, post about, you know, a, a book that you're reading, post about the stuff that's you because you're going to attract you. Your business will be a reflection of people that are that are like you um, and they want to hear what you have to say. Right. And so your advice is to be very authentic, very vulnerable on social media. Don't try to be someone else because everybody can see it <laughs> and build trust and build a brand in public 
but then build relationships in private. So you mm -hmm. message people privately and we're talking Facebook, Instagram, is that yeah, TikTok? Yeah, I, I primarily grew on Facebook um, because groups are very, there's no other social media platform like Facebook with the group aspect. Mm -hmm. I had never, like, I don't like to consume social media, so I had never really explored it. But when I started to, it's like, I love this book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Me too. There are groups of people that just love this book too. And they talk about it. And they talk about how it changed their life and favorite quotes and stuff like that. I'm like, I'll talk about that. <laughs> it's a conversation I want to have. Yeah. So you start to find these groups and Facebook has them for everything. And it's been around the longest. And so they're the most robust. So it's a great place to start. Instagram is like seven platforms in one. So it can be a little bit like overwhelming. Uh, if it feels like too much, don't worry about it. But do start to learn to just post, like meet yourself where you are and do the thing that you can do first. Learn what a story is, learn what a reel is, learn what a post is. And you'll start to do it and then you'll get better at it. You know, it's going to feel overwhelming because you're learning something new, but have fun. Like stop taking yourself so seriously. <laughs> like just yeah. have fun and post and explore. Um, TikTok's a wild world, but yeah. it's all the short form video. Uh, you don't have to dance and point at things, right? There's so much more you can do, okay? Just if you start to explore it and type in things that you're interested in, you'll find people doing things that you're like, I could do that. I could say that. Um, and you'll start to, again, like you said, build a brand. And there's phases. It will start with uh, action marketing where you're reaching out all the time, building these relationships and learning to post and learning to be yourself. And then there will be a point where because of the posts and because you're being yourself, the algorithm starts to learn you, the consistency kicks in and it will start showing you to new people without you having to do anything. And those yeah. new people will actually reach out to you saying, I'm interested in what you have. I want what you have. Tell me more about what you have. So imagine the day that it's inbound. And it can happen. You know, this happened to me this morning, actually, just before the call. I got a message on my messenger from somebody I didn't know who said, I'm interested in getting into network marketing. And I saw one of your videos on YouTube. You know, uh -huh. I don't know which one, but his question was, What do you do? Can you tell me more about your business? And you and you're right. I have spent a lot of time making videos, and I mean. I don't do anything um, glamorous, you know, I'm just sharing my story, sharing the opportunity, talking about the skincare, I've got videos about the performance, um, but I think it's a really great thing to do is to, to make it, keep it personal, you know, I talk about my story as a mom, you know, you talk about your story through brain injury and recovery. If you're listening to this, you have a story. Mm -hmm. Share your story and share it and share it authentically. And what Danielle is saying is exactly true. People will start connecting with you. And you want to remember that at the end of the day, even if it's on Messenger or on Facebook, it's still one human talking to another human. Just be real. Just be a human. Um Let's let's keep it authentic. Lead with your heart. Don't worry about the scripts. Just talk to people like you're talking to a friend. Um, Danielle, I want to wrap it up now. We've we've kept you here long enough, but I was wondering if you had one final thing um, to say, maybe to somebody who is, um, you know, I think most of us know that this product is exceptional. A lot of people here have had really powerful experiences with the product, but they're just not sure if they should start sharing it. You know, what would be your message to help encourage people to get out of that shell, to start telling their family and friends or to start sharing this on social media? You're never going to feel ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
never going to feel like the right time. Like life is happening. Your mind will get loud about doubts. Can I really do this? Who really cares? Is it going to be worth my time? So much is going on. It gets really loud up here. And that's normal. Uh, put it to the side and think about, I often used to picture Virtus Norton and Tyler Norton. And I would think, what would they say? What would they do? And I would have them like, like I had a team with me, so I wasn't alone. This is in my own head. And it gave me the confidence to know, well, I'm speaking their vision. And I'm bringing to light what they set forward and wanted. And I'll never forget, I had the pleasure of meeting Virtus and thanking him for sharing this, for saying no to the buyout from the pharma company, for bringing it to market in the way that it did. And he was crying, I was crying. And he said, Danielle, we need your help. Like it has to move forward from here. And if you're on this call, you have been touched with this because you were meant to be. And the day it was about you was the day that it came into your world. And whatever the product has brought you, I'm sure has been beautiful, but you're meant to pay it forward. And your mind will try to talk you out of it, but there is a bigger purpose to this. And you are part of it by design. There's no mistake in life that you're here listening to this, that ASEA was brought to you. Get out of your own way. Realize you're never going to be ready realize you can do it because that's why it's here. It was by design put in front of you and just picture and have the confidence that Virtus did, the conviction that Tyler has, borrow theirs until mm. you have it within you. Danielle, that's just a wonderful, powerful, bring it home message to wrap it up with. And I just want to really thank you from the bottom of my heart for paying it forward to so many people for paying it forward to us and for allowing us to broadcast your hey, incredible I testimony. So oh. I just want to pop it. Just ask you this. So Zoom. Very oh. excited today. Um, <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of talking about this interview. I think uh, there's going to be a lot of lives changed. So thank you so much, Danielle. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody, for being here. A big warm thank you to our translators, Mauricio and Sylvie. Um, and I'm just answering that quick question there in the group. And I just want to thank you once again. Help me thank Danielle. Oh, thank you. Thanks for inviting me on. And Mauricio and Sylvie, I hope I was slow <laughs> and it worked out okay. They, they need so to go much. and relax now. Thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Bye, Danielle. Bye. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Mm.